We are opening a brand new permanent exhibition called Forever Changed La Florida, 1513-1821. As you may know, next year we will be marking the 500th anniversary of Spanish presence in Florida. This exhibit relates to that anniversary and what happened when, when cultures met and the eventual changes that altered Florida forever. After the French arrived in 1564, Sacheriwa and the new colonists became trading partners. Florida's native populations at the time of European contact, they were very diverse people. They spoke different languages, had different ways of living, ate different types of foods depending on where they lived in the state. In 1565, the Spaniards destroyed the French settlement and established St. Augustine, which was near Sacheriwa's territory. Historical accounts reveal that he and his Indian allies were initially hostile to St. Augustine's residence. Sacheriwa's name then disappeared from written records. Ana Mendez came to Florida as part of the Hernando de Soto expedition in 1539. She was one of two Spanish women on the journey and the only female survivor. Well, it's very significant because this is an important period of history that is not well known to many people. So we want to highlight that period of history and let visitors know about the longevity of the Spanish presence in the state. Florida was a Spanish colony for more than 250 years, and that's actually longer than Florida has been a part of the United States. So there's a rich history there, and we want to let people become more informed about it and have a deeper appreciation of it. The two on the right are olive jars. Olive jars back in the days of Spanish exploration were like the cardboard boxes of the day. They were used to transport wine, water, olive oil, vinegar, and these particular examples are from shipwrecks that occurred off the coast of Florida. Other artifacts are examples of ceramics, plates, bowls, different wares that the Spanish used for eating and cooking. These artifacts are approximately between 300, 400 years old. Even the explorations that came to Florida were diverse. In fact, there were women on some of the um, settlement attempts, and there were black people as well, both enslaved and free, and there were priests that accompanied the expeditions. So there was a, a real diversity of, of, of people who were here during those years. and. Um, a lot of people, of course, are familiar with the founding of St. Augustine in 1565, which is the oldest continuously occupied you know, European settlement in the United States. Um, but before that, there were other settlement attempts that um, Spain um, attempted, and even the French attempted a settlement. That's probably not a, a well-known fact, but they, they made a settlement in 1564, which um, did not survive, ultimately. It's been in the works for over four years now, but the museum has wanted to cover this period of history for a decade or more, but the time was right in time for the 500th anniversary. A village consisted of many structures, including individual dwellings, a large council house or chief's house, and perhaps small storage buildings. 200 to 400 people may have lived in a village, so there would have been dozens of houses. Individual homes and the council house probably were located around a central open space or plaza, where feasts, celebrations, games, and other ceremonial activities took place. The people of Northeast Florida constructed their houses with wooden poles and palm thatching. The houses featured one small doorway, which could be covered with a woven mat. Family members lived together and did not enjoy much privacy when they were indoors. Although people probably spent most of their time outdoors, they came inside to sleep and to perform some tasks. Short wooden platforms against the wall may have functioned as beds and sitting areas. Women kept the houses clean and were responsible for making baskets and mats, cooking, and tending gardens. We hope that they learn several things while they're here. And we also want to inspire people to learn more about the subject matter because there's um, a lot to know, a lot of interesting history that took place. In the future, we hope to complete phase two of the exhibit, which will bring 
the history all the way up to 1821, and we hope to have that open by the end of next year.